All I had was three pin marks right on the inside of my right knee, and then I became sick that following week. I ended up in a coma. They took uh, three spinal taps before they finally decided it was West Nile virus. They told my wife to have my family come out because I wasn't going to live. By the time they got here, I had come out of the coma, but I was a quadriplegic. I didn't have any movement. No fingers, no feet, no head. I couldn't hold my head up. I just all I could do is lay on my back. I couldn't breathe on my own. Nothing. Paonia, Colorado, population 2,000, nestled in the North Fork Valley of Delta County, surrounded by mountains and public lands, watered by irrigation ditches fed by snowmelt. A coal mining and agricultural community since its founding in the late 19th century, Paonia attracted newcomers in the early 1970s, young people who introduced organic methods of farming, created new organizations, and exerted a cultural influence on the small town. Over the years, the cultural divide between the old-timers and the newcomers has blurred, but it has never really gone away. No issue has split the community more than whether or not to spray or fog mosquitoes. This controversy has taken on more urgency since 2003, when the West Nile virus arrived in Delta County, borne by Culex mosquitoes. Members of the Mosquito Board believe that regular spraying of the organophosphate malathion or the synthetic pyrethroid in Biomist is the best way to combat West Nile. Although the board has increased its larviciding program, a less invasive and more efficient method used by other mosquito abatement programs across the West, members of the local board have insisted on weekly fogging. And when Culex populations escalate, spraying has been ramped up to every other day. Uh, any chemical, whether it be chlorine, fluorine, fluoride, or what, uh, kills microorganisms. And it would take a terrible amount of it to damage us. And there is no proven proof in the Delta County area of malathion harming anybody, offspring, or anything else. And malathion has been used in this valley uh, probably for about 75 years on all the fruit trees before the people went organic here without any problem. So I don't, uh, I wouldn't bathe in it, I wouldn't drink it. Uh, I wouldn't bathe in aspirin to tell you the truth. <laughs> Every time you got public anything, you can't please everybody. Public enemy number one to a mosquito is a dragonfly, and unfortunately the chemicals that are used, the larvicides that are used to kill mosquito larvae, also kill dragonfly larvae. So between the fact that the chemicals that are being used are beating down the beneficials, both as uh, larvicides and then the uh, aerial use of all the chemicals weakens the, the natural environmental chain of uh, predatory um, insects and other species, of course, birds and bats. We're just a little too casual about the amount of chemicals that we're putting into the air. Malathion has only been tested for what we call acute effects something that will happen immediately and easily measured and can be seen. And uh, malathion has just only recently begun to be tested for its effect at what we call ambient levels, the levels at which you would be exposed to or I would be exposed to if we were to walk down the street and they were using it in our neighborhood. Um, and so consequently, we're just beginning to learn about not only malathion, but a lot of other chemicals.
Fogging should be used only as a last resort, according to John Poppy from the Colorado Department of Health and Environment. The Paonia Board has met with opposition in the form of angry participants at meetings, threatening phone messages, people accosting spray truck drivers, and even, in 2003, dynamiting of the Mosquito Control Building, a crime that was never prosecuted. Some are involved not so much because of the spray issue itself, but because of other wounds in the culture war. I think the thing that grates on me the most with the mosquito thing is that this board is elected. They do not have to honor the no spray signs, and they do. Um, they don't even have to, as I understand, um, cater to the organic orchards. It's up to the organic orchards to put up a barrier if they don't want to be sprayed and that they cannot sell the first two rows um, as organic as all if they're sprayed around them. They try their hardest to, to, to make people happy, and yet all they do is get criticism, criticism. You know, I've done some real serious thinking about this, and I, I think that part of the problem is, is that our town is changing, and the local people do not like the way it's changing. Some of the statements, the no and pro-spray signs from both sides, would be funny except that the issue is deadly serious, especially for West Nile victims. With just a little bit of extra educational support, on both sides of the fence here, spray and no spray, would tremendously benefit the community. And this, uh, I think, hideous cultural war would go away.